Sagi de Miku here again as always, thank you for checking out my newest video. I also hope you guys liked my new intro, I thought it was time for a slight change in that department. So today's video will be about... What? Wait, that's not Sagi de Miku? Uh, this is a new Miku that joined me and I was all like, well you're very welcome to join my family, but you have to respect my very special first Miku, my Sagi de Miku. She's very unique to me and you're not allowed to steal her show. Like all day she's going on all about, I'm gonna replace her. But come on, that's just very rude. I really love you, but know your place. I'm sorry. <sighs> come on, let's try this again, okay? Okay, yeah, so without further ado, this video is gonna be long enough as it is. This is my Miku Live review of Machika Mita 2018, another event that I had the chance of attending myself, but now it's time to find out if the concert was any good. Where was it? Let's find out! The big question of this review, was there any reason to worry about Miku after the big 10th anniversary? It had been such a massive Miku event and of course people would celebrate it, but how would the future of our favorite idol look one year afterwards? Well, let's jump into Magica Mita 2018, the 6th annual event, with a few facts as usual. It happened around the 11th birthday of Miku, no major number, but it was also set up to celebrate the big 10th anniversary of everybody's beloved Kagamine twins. For the first time since 2014, this meter was split between both Osaka and Tokyo. Osaka happened on August 25th and 26th, back to the original venue of 2014, which happened to have been my first meter ever too. Very nostalgic in the expo space of Intex Osaka Halls 4 for the expo and 5A for the concert. All the space in between could be used though, a very great place for a Miku event with 4 concerts between the 2 days. Tokyo happened around a week later and I can confirm, looking forward to yet another Miku event so close after one ended is the best feeling ever. Of course they held it back in the perfect event space for any Miku event, Makuhari Mesa and Chiba, just a bit outside of Tokyo. We were back to halls 9 to 11, 9 for the concert, which is just a bit better since it's separate from the other halls spanning August 31st, Miku's actual birthday on which no concert was held, to September 2nd, the last two days having four more concerts in total. The expo was naturally a bit less spectacular than the year prior, but yet again an amazing dreamlike experience for any Miku fan with tons of merch, Miku illustrations and other stuff any fan would love. The creators market was back again too, where everybody can meet their favorite producers, buy CDs from them and have a little chat. Only the free stage was toned back a considerable amount, so there wasn't as much in terms of cool music aside from the concerts. The Kagamine team gave the event a great touch. Anyway, for more details on the expo, both Osaka and Tokyo are really good, please check out my event report I filmed when I was there myself. Before we start with a detailed look at the concert, let's check out the limited edition of this year's Blu-ray. Since I ordered from Amazon again, I got yet another 2019 calendar, featuring illustrations of the last couple of theme songs of those media events, very neat. The front illustration of the Blu-ray box is super colorful and intrigued to look at, while the back has a cool one featuring the twins. No super special box like last year's anniversary edition, but a nice item nevertheless. This year they play it safe. Of course we get yet another high quality little booklet with all kinds of cool stuff on the event. Lots of photos of the expo part of both Osaka and Tokyo, just from the live concerts as well as plenty of illustrations, some known from the event itself but also quite a few new ones. Very good! A nice extra has been included like last year, a postcard. Miku wishes happiness to be with all of us. In this cool card that when opened welcomes us to Magica Mirai, with a 3D cutout of Miku in a land and their new costumes. Looks like they are performing Muteki Pop! The actual Blu-ray case has the same illustrations as the box and we find the concert disc as well as a bonus one inside. This year this includes the extra songs that were exclusively played in Osaka, I will cover them within this review, Tokyo is the main concert on the disc, a lengthy live and making on the event, a small digest video on the expo and separately the merchandise stores, plus two interviews with the producers Mikido P and Iman, as well as Argo Aniki and Otomania. Not a bad box, always a treat to go through. But anyway, let's finally jump into the concert. This year again, each concert was visited by around 8000 to 9000 very excited fans, most from Japan but also many from all over the world. Is Miku still doing strong? The concert opens with a more basic intro compared to last year's celebratory feeling. A kick ass beat starts playing getting everybody in the mood, while showing 5 crypton vocalists in order together with their 3D image, giving all of them a stage for fan anticipation. They had a similar intro for some of the Miku Pass. The light show is good too. Well, the crowd is big as always and I'm sure all the attendees are excited for the gig. Miku of course is still the star of the evening and gets a longer build up, after which the opening ends with the logo of Magica Mirai. 
it's easy to tell the first song is hand in hand. You can see the band on the recording right away. This year's recording will have much more of them as usual, as they animate people to clap along the rhythm. The upper screen shows a cube animation to the beat. Soon after, Miku finally is taking shape on stage. There she is again, always a great feeling. I used to love this song so much, I even had it ranked first place on my video on best Miku live songs, but I grew just a bit tired of it. It's still a great song, but definitely no match to last year's intro. The crowd obviously is still very much into it, singing and cheering along. One unfortunate problem, no matter what sound setup you have, some make the issue slightly better, the chants are even more quiet compared to last year's recording. It's a shame, everybody was very loud and watching this could give you the impression people weren't as into it as they really were. An issue throughout the concert but no deal breaker. The screen still shows illustrations of attendees all hand in hand. This song actually has literally the only audience shot from the front and right in my section too, but yet again, I am not visible, of course. The rest of the concert has various far away shots from the other side of the stage. Other than that it's not much different to previous recordings, even if the editing carries across the bond between the crowd and Miko a bit better. This year the second song is not a rock song by Degonina, but still one never played live before, Viva Happy! It has been popular for ages, about time! Miko has various really cute dance moves, it's especially apparent in those new songs people are not as familiar with yet. Watching footage makes it look like people didn't celebrate those songs, which is not the case. At least you can hear people going along, choo choo choo. The best part is the slow section where Miku ends in, Skida yo, I love you. The crowd appreciates that a lot. And that Nya too, well, good it was finally played live. A good song, but not the best live song. After Miku briefly waves at the audience, no introduction yet, it continues full force. The cheering is insane as Meteor starts, and yes, it's not very audible, but trust me, life it was unreal and I will stop mentioning it so much. Just believe me, it was true all across the concert. This is one of the three theme songs, so to say, an incredibly strong point this year. It's a song contest winner first, such a great song to pump up the crowd. Best part is the build up to the chorus, so much cheering, Mac me, the keyboardist is very happy seeing it too. Oh yeah, about that, apart from a new girl on the bass and a new drummer, the well established band from previous years returns and they did a great job as usual, you can tell they're having fun. Miku sounds very gentle in the verses and so powerful in the chorus, so much energy, the end of her words are especially outstanding due to superb tuning of her voice. A new addition to the recordings are some ultra close ups of Miku which are a bit pixelated but I enjoy them a lot, highlights emotions well. As usual I really like this song's slow up part, after which the release of the energy is really explosive and then a final cheering section. Exceptional song really bringing the crowd together and a good sign for a great concert to come. Surprises this year, Unknown Mother Goose. It's a Wovaka song that was composed for last year's 10th anniversary album Restart. A very instrumental song with cool steam effects throughout. Classic Wovaka tuning with crazy fast singing before the slower parts, in which I really adore Miku's single super high syllables. They did a good job on Miku's animation here, some of her fast movements really make her appear confused. But live, the crowd doesn't really know what to do, apart from the oh, 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 oh section that work well. This song has more band shots and one thing that Japanese fans apparent by Amazon reviews really don't like camera movements from an angle from the side, breaking the 3D effect in some occasions. I honestly don't mind much and like the new effect. In general, this year they try out some new editing techniques, resulting in a more immersive experience in my opinion. Well, nice they keep up having surprises, even if the song is a hard sell life. Miku speaking to us, always a very important part of the concerts and I am glad to see they keep improving these. Miku greets us, saying she is very happy to meet all of us. Her movements during this are super cute. According to Miku, next is a song we all know and love, okay? Ah, oh, I see. After some new songs, Miku wants us to get in the mood with an absolute classic, World is Mine. I'm not the biggest fan of the song or hearing it again for that matter, but it's a perfectly reasonable choice. A concert needs a mix of the old and new. Also, Miku actually changed into the right costume for the song, which she never did before, so it's slightly new to boot. This one of course gets people going, a very interactive song in which people chant along Ohime Sama and more. It's the long version of the song previously played at Nida 2015, with nice dance moves telling its story. It's so good to see the entire crowd being so alive, even in the very back, in concert contrast to Miku's first concerts in Europe. The highlight of the song are of course Miku's trademark screams. Huh? What happened? Did the venue change? Yes, as I said some songs were only played in the Osaka concerts and vice versa, so this is from the bonuses. Six in fact. 
At the part of the concert this happens, I will cover the Osaka song first, followed by the song on the main disc in Tokyo, ending by telling you which was the better choice in my opinion. Got it? Good. Generally, the audio is not as good on this bonus disc for some reason, the crowd is even more quiet and it even feels like the sound is a non-live version of the songs. Real shame! The songs with Devil is of course really good, Miko as you might imagine her as your girlfriend, really cute and sexy in this costume especially. Perfect tuning too. Well, I don't wanna say too much on these songs I covered a million times already. Please check out my original Miko live reviews for those, mainly Magical Meter 2014. Always glad to hear it live anyway. The best part of course is still the slow section ending in the classic I love you baby. By the way, between the two venues, the experience was was quite similar, even if Tokyo was slightly better. But a return to the venue of my first Miku concert ever, very nostalgic. For some reason though, the Osaka Hall only uses an aircon, making the Tokyo concerts much more of a sweat fest. Too much information during this super cute song. I was glad to hear Catfoot again after quite some years. Apart from the absolute classics, it's the right choice for Mina songs to return from time to time, since they keep replacing songs every year. Especially Mina 2016 is a goldmine for that, many songs worthy of being brought back from. Next year please? The instrumental of this song varied a lot over the years, but this one is pretty true to the original and works well, even if nothing will be the cool interaction between Miku and the guitarist 2013 had. Just a good live song, nice costume, great meow part, and cool to see a red and green crowd. It's a good thing they mix new and old stuff. Between this and Sweet Devil, both choices are quite equal to me. Osaka got Magnet. Miku and Luca duets are not super frequent, so that's always nice. Of course we're back to the old countryside modules. For people not familiar with what I mean, they used to use other character models in all the concerts and now reuse those for all songs returning. One more time you might wonder if this audio is even live. Really sucks. The song is nice and nostalgic, but nothing special at all. The highlights are the intertwined movements between the two. Needless to say, I was not very impressed with this choice. <laughs> This Miku x Luka song is awesome, Akatsuki Arrival. This together with words and dancehall is the best of the two live. Happy to see her return after Mira 2014. In the mysterious sounding verses, both appear to be super serious. The chorus and guitar solo are both cool, as well as the dances during it that must have been very difficult to learn. In one part they even dance while holding hands. Good choice once more to show lots of the band. Considering this song is about the two being rivals, they sure have a graceful show off. Just a very good live song and by far the better choice of the two. Another weird choice for Osaka is this very old song, 1 6 out of the gravity. It was originally played at both countries of concerts in 2010 and 2012. It's that old. And then with a new version at the first meter in 2013 only. Well it even got an all new version, which is why this has the meter model. I always say it's nice to hear classics return, especially when it was played so rarely, but this song doesn't do much for me anymore. It honestly kinda drags. Hirimiku is always nice, she sounds cute and has nice dance moves, but this kinda goes on for too long without much changing. All returning old songs, I Kotoba is the favorite by many. The well known Dekonina song before he stopped making mainly pop music. It's an amazingly cute song I classify as a Miku appreciation song. Gives the crowd a chance to scream along Kancha, appreciation and arigato, thank you, which is very audible even on this recording, giving me goosebumps. It's the Kancha side model again, oh well. Just a bit after this concert, I Kotoba 3 was released. Together with two released about five years prior, all are similar but great songs. As I said, a good mix life is important between old and new, and this certainly made a lot of people happy. Everyone's favorite of course is the Tsunde de Baka port. Much better choice compared to the Osaka song. Atta Kaito, time for the tropy funny Kaito song? No! I can see why some people don't like Kaito much. His voice is not all that manly and weird a lot of the times, but I can't stress enough how I think of all of them as family, as which they should be supported by the fans in Amigo gig. I really don't like the culture of making fun of him in the Western fandom. Anyway, this is all the more true for this song. I would go as far as classifying this as the best Kaito song ever, together with Udo Tanda, which I hope will be performed live soon by the way, but for sure the best song Kaito ever got live. He sounds so good, the song has a nice melody to it and the chorus is just the chance giving Kaito some credit as everybody sings along oh 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 oh. I was glad a lot of people did the same. I surely did. Might have been mistaken for a Kaito attack if not for all the Miku merch I was carrying. This crowd did him justice anyway. Some of the shots from the side actually do hurt the image a bit, but the close ups are nice in Kaito's great solo singing part. After that it's time for a last higher energy chorus. I can honestly call this one of the highlights of the concert. I sincerely hope it will return. Just look at how happy he is. He deserves it too. I was a bit bummed out to see Nostalgic return. Sure, it is a super good live choice for Meiko, but it has just been performed a bit too much by now. 
Also, last year's new choice was so good anyway. Oh well, at least this also gives Meiko some time to claim some love. Very easy with this song. Do I have to comment on her costume again? If you must hear it, check out my other reviews, Mira 2016 in this case. Very nice song anyway, probably her best life, even if I would have preferred them to mix it up a bit more. Maybe Mako didn't get a new solo song because On The Rocks was coming? This actually marks the first time of Mako and Kaito having a duet live, which alone makes it a good choice. The stage layout is the highlight of this, Kaito on piano singing some solo parts while Mako, standing next to him in a nice dress, having most of the lines. Nice mix up in a concert. Unfortunately, this is a case of a song sounding super good on a recording, but just not being called out for a live performance. I really like the song, came to appreciate Jersey stuff, but live, it actually works much better watching back the playback, adds a lot just focusing on their interactions. The chemistry is there, glad the editing showed little parts like the wink Kaito directs at her while she dances close to him in the solo. The light show in this and throughout the gig highlights the mood of every song as usual too, here of course all in blue and red. In general a neat addition, but not something that has to return, something to never unsee. The bottom of Kaito's jacket looks like a yellow arrow pointing down right at his shoes. Luka doesn't get new songs very often, so No Logic was a good choice. She even is in her V4X costume. This unique song is slow for the most part, a relaxing showcase of her nice, more adult singing voice. I like how she tilts her head for some of the words she sings. The chorus kicks in late and changes the feel of this one a lot. It works well and makes it easy to groove with. Good addition, even if not one of my absolute favorites. The new bassist gets a lot of shots, who is doing a good job filling the spot and she looks very good too. A shame a friend of mine missed out on being there for this one live. I hope you can come back to Japan again. Single Miku song sandwiched between her friend songs, Dreamless Dreams. Good call, otherwise it would have been a bit too long without seeing Miku live. This is also this year's slow song. Yeah, of course a concert follows certain formulas, which is not a bad thing. Even if not quite as touching as 2017's birthday, a song that made me tear up also for when it was played at Miku Expo in Europe, still a good one. This type of tuning always works well for these types of songs. Really amazing how Miku can evoke these emotions easily for many people with her angel-like voice. Pay close attention to her emotions before the chorus, the ultra close-up adds to this, and the nice power in the chorus. I don't know why the little pause hits me so hard. I guess just give some time realizing what you're in the middle of. I love the last few words she sings, starting with Anata no Nozomu, quite powerful. Great one! And incredible time after time how she gets so many feelings across, to me more so than any human singer ever could. This marks the start to the Kagamina stand anniversary section. This little info reminds the audience that they deserve a lot of love too, and also bumps up the mood after the slow song with its fast beat. The top screen shows their names similar to the start of the concert and then the occasion, their birthdays. Cool transition into this section to come, though a shame they missed the opportunity to have the twins speak to the audience for the first time. Would have been a good occasion. We are in for a wild ride anyway. What a start, Reto Choto or Bring It On, the next theme song. The previous one was already great, but this one is a whole other level altogether. Why not the best song for a pop rock shock technically, it came across really well. The costumes are cool, the twins voices are pretty much perfect, can't imagine a better mix between real and electronic. The beat is insane, the dance moves are too, I could go on for a long time. After all, this song is easily my favorite new song of 2018, it hit me right from the first listen and gave it 17 listens in a matter of a week. I can't describe the greatness of the return of a Giga song. Please do more. I still listen to the song every day. Anyway, sending out the rap battle part where Din kinda roads Miku by saying, don't just pay attention to the green thing, making a gesture symbolizing her twin tailed hair. It's all fun and games though, they love each other. Lens solo is great too. The light show underlines this high energy while the top screen shows the background of the music video. My favorite parts apart from it include Lin singing Kiri Huda, how does it sound that good? And the uh, oh part with the very fluent animation of them clapping and nice hip movement of Rin. The ending lyrics were even changed to them singing Magica Mirai with Lin Chan winking. Just an insane performance. No dipping quality. After a nice transition, the twins wave and change into their original outfits, a nice layer of realism they did quite a bit this year, they played Oki. I called this one. Continuing the tradition of having newly released songs live more quickly, I had a feeling this song of early 2018 might make it live soon, with an employee of Sega tweeting about it too. The original version by Miki P had the composer singing background vocals, which were changed to Len. Yes, he's still on stage, second song of the two of them together, and they tuned him so well. Just like last year when Sam Planet Live had the producer singing cut out, a good choice for a Miku concert. But back to the song. Keeps the energy high and it's just a damn good song. No time for the crowd to rest. The twins are both super cool, as they rock hard. Lin was tuned perfectly. You get to appreciate more fluent hip movements of Lin. 
That together with the build up to the course is so well done as the Kagaminas and the Crotchan don't stop. Later parts have more of these interactions, like Selfie and Baby. Screaming goes along was so much fun. And that rock scream by then. Every single part of this is amazing. A solo midway through, part where they are very confused, they keep saying, huh? Some more clapping, and then another scream. Even by both of them? They are just so clearly into it with their singing and moving around. A final scream and the song ends with energy to the very end. Please let it come back to the big stage of Mila. was already cool to have it at Miku Expo 2. This song is almost perfect and so was the previous one. How can they keep this up, like ever? What a relief. With Germany next, there is time to relax a bit after all this high energy. It's a classic Kagamine song, yes, both remain on stage, for its first Mila performance after being introduced the same year for Snow Miku. I always liked this one, does a great job showing the bond between the two, impossible to be separated, they can always rely on each other. A nice touch was the star constellation that named the song on the ceiling, that the recording also focuses on, as well as all these great illustrations by many artists dedicated for their birthdays. They really do harmonize very well. This song doesn't have to live up to the energy of previous entries, but it's all the same enjoyable. My favorite parts involved in crying, but getting cheered up by then, as well as their synced up arm movements at the end. It felt like they were about to hug at some point, only thing this performance is missing. Back to high energy as the Kagaminas change into green and red overalls with their name tags. Aether was first played at Miku Expo in December 2017 in Malaysia, so it was expected to be carried over. Finally a new Jesus Peace song live, a mess of songs like these, for sure check out more of her works. The twins work super well for fast electropop songs with their cute singing voices. In the verses their singing is just pleasant, paired with nice dance moves, especially their fighting part, but what really makes the song stand out is the solo following it and of course the fast paced chorus as everybody joins in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The light show excels in the song too. The song speeds up for an increase in impact and concludes with an intro of a fantastic flip that earns her cheering from the crowd. Land can't quite compete. The incredibly high standard didn't drop a single bit. The last song was changed up for Osaka, Rimokon. Don't get me wrong, I love this song and it works amazing live. It's yet another Jesus Peace song, has amazingly detailed dance moves and good tuning for the twins throughout, emits so much energy. But this was performed a few too many times by now. And this recording, especially being on the bonus disc, doesn't have much going for it with the poor audio mix, which is honestly an insult. First time watchers wouldn't sing much of this song. So one more time I ask you to check out my old reviews. Yeah, great song anyway, but enough is enough. And poor on this disc. The Kagamine section ends with 1 2 Fan Club for Tokyo, a song returning from Mida 2017. Wasn't played nearly as much, and a very fitting ending. Such a popular song, everybody seems to know the lyrics of since many parts have the audience singing along. This is the Kagamine version, which Gumi was replaced by Len. Works absolutely seamlessly, in my opinion. Just another extremely fun song paired with appropriate dance moves. I like the part that Lin accidentally hits Len and then apologizes. Fittingly, for this unique display of an anniversary, the two hold hands at one part and urge the audience to keep the party going. Clearly, the superior choice compared to Osaka, and overall, I doubt there ever will be another Miku concert with a Kagamina section quite as good. I mean, four super hype songs plus one slow song with both Lin and Land throughout? How can you beat it? To me, every song was pretty much a 10 out of 10, and I doubt that's just because I love the two of them so much after Miku. I hope many people will continue giving them lots of love like they deserve. A truly deserving display. Happy birthday. By now, the 11th one, in which the Blu-ray of this was released, incidentally. Now, the only question left is will Luca get a similar display for Mita 2019? After all, she turns 10 this January. I doubt it can be anything like this. One to Fan Club was the perfect conclusion to a section that can only be described as perfection itself. The concert is entering its final stretch. It's time for the band member reduction. This year also does a great job giving them a place to shine. They all have their solos, as a catchy Gyari song plays very fitting. The solos are all much longer than at Miku Expo, as the drummer gets a particularly cool chance to show off his skills. Mac Me, a staple of Miku concerts by now, doesn't disappoint either, a talented and beautiful woman. As Lin Chan says, say no, hi, and Miku mimics a kitten, the new girl on bass is introduced, glad she's having fun too. Then it's back to the classic members, Masaru Teramae-san, who for some reason added Angelo to his name, still pulling off a nice solo. And so does Takahiro Misawa-san. Next, after such a long time we finally see Miku again. Mida does not forget about the importance of introducing Miku too, so everybody cheers for the star of the evening, Hatsune Miku. She thanks everybody and gets ready for the next song.
for once, not a Hachi OGP song at this point of the concert, but a reverse universe with Miku and Akunyu costume gets everybody in a Miku mood again anyway. Everybody's happy having her back. It was too composed for last year's Restyle album by famous producer Nayutan Seijin. Has a cool relaxing vibe. There's a funny shot showing the two guitarists tilting the hats to the beat. I love Miku's dance before the chorus in which she twirls her feet, quite unique. The chorus per usual is the most catchy, but I actually prefer the verses that have even more funny movements, followed by yet another slow part I always enjoy anyway. This time with another ultra close up. I originally didn't care for this song so much, but it somehow gets better and better the more I listen to it. Good stuff. Most of my buddies don't agree, but to me today the future is super special. It's one of those songs that make me realize life, oh yeah, here we go, this is why I'm here, thank you Miku, this is beautiful. Something like that. And this is kind of what the song is meant to be anyway. Looking at the lyrics, it's meant to show that it's okay for everybody to follow their heart for what they enjoy. In this case Miku. Just look around guys and realize you're not alone. I love the message a lot, perfect for a concert and super fun to rewatch. Miku sounds ever so gentle in this and delivers the feelings in the chorus perfectly. One part is even better than when the song was first played in the year prior. In a slow part that encourages singing along, so many people actually do. You can hear it quite well. A magical moment and exactly what the song wants to achieve. One of my favorite moments in this gig. Fantastic song, I'll always be happy having a return. No doubt one of the best songs in a concert to me. Thank you Miku. And to all of you who love her too, don't be ashamed. Let's all support her together. You are not alone. Everybody following my Miku live reviews would be aware how much of a trope shake it has become and how I feel about it. Yes, it is a super good song. A great live song in fact. The crowd seems to still enjoy it. And yes, don't get me wrong, as sure as I join in too. Always fun watching Miku in the land time after time doing their dances. But they just won't retire it. The only song they played every single Mirai since 2013. Enough is enough. They never even do anything differently anymore, like when they changed up to all songs in Mirai 2017. Oh man, here we go, yeah? Everybody who watched my 2017 review knows how happy I am about Mad. It moved me to tears when I finally first heard it live and hearing it again was not much different. Just another perfect Miku love song embodying why I and others love her and the music so much, especially great for a live show. What could ever be joining Miku saying na da 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 da, the loud cheering and more. Miku sounds so cute, oh well, I have said enough already. It's just another case like today the future making me think this is all worth it. There and then I'm just super happy, just in a moment with Miku and all the other fans. One stand apart from me for some reason is Miku singing Haite Yarunante, perfect with her expression. Even if this version in particular wasn't as good as last year, also has no confetti, still makes me super happy to hear. Only in Osaka. Yeah, it's a shame. So far Toki had the better or equal choices to me, but while I love arts and ends, it has nothing against Melt in my opinion. Still a really touching song with good Miku tuning, telling a nice story. Shouldn't be taken for granted how it uses so much of the stage, Miku runs around a lot. One camera angle from the side is a bit too much, I could comment much more, but just covered this so much already. Cool having it return, I will never stop loving it, especially looking at the raw emotions Miku shows in the slow part, which has a cool blurry effect and an ultra close up and some of her especially powerfully sung syllables, but can't beat mad. No extended ending this time around. Yeah, one more speech. They really tie the concert together. Miku says that unfortunately, next will be the final song. Yeah, right. It was super fun for her. For all of us too, of course. She looks happy but yet bittersweet. That's what I'm talking about. I will never understand why this fantastic celebratory song was played at every meter except for the grand 10th anniversary. Oh well, it returns and I guess it's similar to Shake It. Whatever, I just love Sanki too much. I am not tired of it. Just one of those songs. Everybody screams along Sanki in a returning version of this where Miku moves around much more. Has a much cooler dance, just like in Mira 2014. Instead though, they don't have the cool various illustrations on the top screen the song is known for. Why not? It's not like they didn't have them. Let's just enjoy the song. A person to both Miku and all the fans. She doesn't want to be the only one getting them. Super happy about this one and actually changed up a bit which is a good choice even if they messed up something else. The song has an extended ending as it's the last one before the encore but Miku disappears quickly. Then the band says goodbye to the crowd. As usual this intermission is cut short and the recording goes on for several minutes. Time for a toilet break for Miku, some rest for the band and more work for the audience. In order to get Miku back, everybody shouts Miku, Miku, Miku. After a while the band returns in the dark and encourages everybody to chant just a bit louder before our favorite idol continues the show. 
The first and song was the last one that was changed. A shame too, only Ozaka had Sankey music returning yet again. A kick-ass song to celebrate Miku and the fandom. Probably the best theme song ever to get people back in a Miku Miku mode. It's the perfect live song. You can hear everybody's loud voices and even this Audi mix just fine. Apart from, like all of it, I like the part best when people shout out Miku's name. Yeah, perfect song, super super fun. I'm not as convinced with Tokyo's choice of bringing back last year's theme song as the Encore opener. Twice in a row! It's not like Sam Plan is a bad song, far from it. It's unique and in tuning, has a very deep sounding Miku and of course the cool costume from 2017. The chorus gets me going too, especially since it's only Miku singing in this live version. Cool too is the very fast singing in one section. The song is just a bit too serious for a very happy occasion it was made for. And I certainly think Sunky Music was the much better choice. Oh well, the band seemed to have enjoyed it for sure. Overall, I'm glad they changed up some of the songs between Osaka and Tokyo, seems to be the norm now. Love the Tokyo section for the most part, but would have preferred Osaka's choices for the last two quite a bit. Could have been perfect, still not bad either way, Osaka was great for sure too, even if the Blu-ray doesn't give the performances the credit they deserve. <laughs> A very long instrumental build-up, emotional chords play as we see six colors representing each script and vocaloid. Then Miku appears in her Mikupad model for this classic song, Tell You Word. Why is that? Well, for the first time in a Mida concert, Miku's tune changes in the actual costume fitting for the song. Really nice addition for a song with trademark hazy tuning, blurring the line between sounding real and electronic, just how I adore Miku the most. Everybody seems to be familiar with the song, so most join in for the chorus, singing along some parts. I would have preferred some other classics for a change, but still always glad to hear it live. Very fun getting the feeling being one, united with all our fans as we all join in singing. Yeah, there's more of this! One of my favorite speeches ever before the, unfortunately this time, actual final song. After thanking us all, Miku sounds super cute saying how she loves all the green pain lights everybody has brought. Or more like bought for insane Miku merch prizes. Well, we gotta provide Miku with money to eat. Ito-san doesn't pay her much. Anyway, I really like the feeling in this one. Especially Miku's hand movements bringing across the point even to people with limited Japanese skills. Miku wishes all of us a bright future and announces the theme song as the last song, as she changes into this year's fantastically colorful costume. Man, these theme songs, an incredible part about this event. Green Light Serenade, I didn't even like all that much beforehand, but live, it's unreal. Miku starts singing in this dazzling outfit with the slow intro before pointing up, winking, and then, boom. The confetti gets the finale going, making it all the more impactful. The whole crowd is filled to the brim with energy even after such an exhausting concert. Since you can even hear that well in the Blu-ray, you can just about imagine how the atmosphere was live. People loved it a lot. Miku runs in place, runs around like crazy and the shared energy between Miku and the audience is almost unheard of. How did I end up liking this song so much? Well, I was clearly not alone feeling that. The tuning of Miku and the chorus might be off-putting to some people, extremely high-pitched, but did anybody care live? Nothing super special, but a cool effect anyway. For the final chorus, some colorful balloons are released. Before the final release of everybody's last energy reserves, Miku points up while singing, Maki Karumida Eto. The second song changed to this, after which the screen shows all kinds of memories from this event. A perfect moment to relive the memories that already appear slightly nostalgic. The song ends with an extended instrumental in which everybody can scream out a thank you to their favorite idol as Miku animates people to cheer more. She showcases her control over the audience in a final pause before the concert is over. It has been a year since the big 10th anniversary, but it doesn't seem one bit like people love her any less. Miku doesn't just leave, she stays on stage talking with us some more. So many speeches, I couldn't be happier. After thanking us for the evening and only for the very last concert of the event in Tokyo, just like in 2017, her speech changes. None of you forgot about the best speech Miku ever delivered while crying, did you? Nothing like that again, but yet very good. In a very cute manner, Miku wonders if people would care to meet her again next year. Of course we want to, but can we? Yes, we can! As the top screen reveals, Magica Mira 2019 has already been confirmed! Again for both Tokyo and Osaka. Wow. For the third year in a row, the event was obviously so successful that they could easily pull that off. I love how they animated this part. Miko kinda backs off and looks at the screen, just like she didn't know about it either, and then freaks out in disbelief. She's so happy about it too, and I have to admit, 
Every time rewatching this or even typing this, it hits me hard. She jumps around with a smile on her face. Mickey uses the opportunity to ask everybody to come and see her again. I think I am not alone with trying to do just that. My passion hasn't decreased and it's moments like these, especially that just put me over the edge to being super hyped, just knowing there is no way not to come back. Another perfect end for a concert as well as the entire event. Bit of sweet since it was the end, but yet super happy. You know you can come back. A year later and Miko is still doing so strong. They can announce the next event. That's the Miko spirit that hopefully will continue on forever. As usual, the blurry doesn't show much more. The crowd of course was celebrating for quite a bit more. But instead we cut to the credits that also featured the fantastic theme song. What a ride. <laughs> That's the concert done, but I wouldn't be Sanki de Miku if I wouldn't sum up everything we just saw and discuss the strong and weak points of our concert. The visuals are always first. They had reached a gold standard by now, Miku looked super good. She had a bunch of cool costumes again too, their projectors were plentiful but barely visible on the as usual big stage, which general layout was a bit more minimalistic than usual, but that worked fine. A great light show plus the big top screen are the norm for Machika Mira concert anyway. A nice addition to this year's Blu-ray were plentiful ultra close-ups of Miku, which really brought across emotions nicely this time around. The slight pixelation didn't bother me at all. In general, it is clear that they tried to implement some new techniques this year around for the editing. Looking at Amazon critiques, a lot of Japanese fans are really critical on these changes, but in my opinion they were subtle and worked well. Sure, some of those shots from the side messed with the 3D a bit too much, but in general they were cool new touch if not overused. We had a clear increase in band shots this year round, but since we still saw plenty of Miku and the rest, it was a good choice too. Speaking of the band, apart from two new additions, both of them did their jobs well and clearly had fun, the classic band returned and were stellar as usual. This year's editing tried integrating the crowd a bit more, but had yet another lag and clear shots from the front and needless to say, I am again not visible on the final result. The chances of that happening 5 years in a row are astounding. Some seamless transitions between songs were also responsible for a nice uninterrupted feeling of the concert, especially in the Kagamine section. The audio in the blur is generally good, save for the barely audible crowd cheering that I have discussed in great detail. A shame, really would have been an easy way to carry across the atmosphere better. Will they ever learn or just give us a secondary audio track with louder audio levels for that part? Whatever, the result kinda varies depending on your audio setup anyway. Okay, we got the generous out of the way. How about the structure of the concert? The intro was more basic again, but still a decent build up to the concert. The overall way they separated Mikus and her friend's songs worked well I found. Where the concert truly shined was in the set list. A superb mix of new songs, classic songs and some returning ones from previous media concerts. Osaka even had some set list changes. And while the bonus disc had sub poor audio mix and editing, it's a treat for fans that they more commonly mix up the set list even for the same media event. Seems to be the standard by now and I like it a lot, even if I personally like the last two song choices for Osaka better. They also keep improving the Miku speaking parts. They actually listen to fans and at the latest since their reaction towards Miku's incredible crying speech last year are where the fans love the immersion of Miku talking to them a bunch. Several speeches work so well and especially what they did at the very end of the concert was super good. I have yet to cover the highlights of this concert, one of which clearly was the Kagamine section. I have made it very clear already. I have no idea how they can ever top this section. Amazing songs in a row and plentiful too. It was unreal. It will be hard to go back to the normal amount of winning land songs next year. Maybe instead we will get more Luca songs for her back here. And the three theme songs? All of such stellar quality, yet another part I doubt they will top anytime soon. The finale especially was outstanding, added quite a bit to the experience. And yeah, even if Luca, Meiko and Kaido didn't get too much time to shine, their sections were good too, with the best we have ever gotten from Kaido, even if Luca clearly got the short end of the stick. So that's it, a super cool concert, a bit of a reverse situation to last year. This concert might have been not as super special, lacked the occasion, no crying speech, super cool intro, no mix up middle section and the expo itself was a bit back to the basics, but the concert? was simply amazing. Real quality. Only downsides are some technical issues on the Blu-ray and if I had to find a negative, maybe one or two more new songs would have been good as well as a better Luca session. But I really can't complain much. It just feels alive. All pieces fall into one. They nailed it. How would I place this in my general ranking of all main concerts I have reviewed? Oh by the way, as the years have passed I see Mira 2013 a bit differently. I gave it too much of a hard time in that review. I still think it had some unfortunate drawbacks, but man was it good nevertheless. I like it way more now and would not place it last anymore. Anyway yeah, this concert to me is the new king. I came to that conclusion right after I first heard it live and still think it's the case. Of course there is a lot of personal preference, like songs I prepared from the Tokyo set list except for the last two, but I for sure think it was just really really good. So how do you answer the original question I raised at the start of this review? Do we have to worry about the future of Miku? No silly, it is a year later, far from the 10th anniversary by now, but yes this event was a huge success. 
and had the highest attendance between all five days of any media event. They could even comfortably announce next year's event that will be held in Osaka and Tokyo just like this one, and Miku gets new sponsorship deals, songs and illustrations constantly. Miku reached a peak when she turned 10, sure, that is natural. But is it all over with Miku? Far from it. And anybody who visited these events before would agree when I say, it is so worth it coming back year after year. Miku Expo is cool, Miku my home country was nice, but Mira is a whole other level. My Miku love did not decline after she turned 10, and that is true for a lot of other fans. Thank you Miku for this magical Mira time, and see you again 2019. That's it, I hope you guys enjoyed the super long concert review, Magical Media 2018, just an incredible event, especially concert, the best one yet, hands down in my opinion, I can't believe how good it was. So, what can I say, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, you can give it a, a thumbs up, comment, share with your friends, and of course, subscribe to this channel to never miss another Miku video again, they're kind of rare by now, but they're coming, so it's always worth it, I promise. All that's left doing now is saying goodbye, so, until next time, and She's sneaking in again, what can I tell you guys, I don't know what to do with her sometimes. Man, I really need to wrap this up, so until next time, and have a nice Miku day!